No, no, here on Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We turn now to Nigeria, where journalist and pro-democracy activist Omayeri Sowori is entering his second month in jail for calling for peaceful nationwide protests against the government. Sowori called this mo his movement Revolution Now and mobilized activists to take to the streets on August 5th. But just two days before the protests were set to begin, he was arrested by the state and accused of attempting to take over the government. He's been in prison for more than a month now as human rights groups continue to call for his immediate release. He's a human rights activist and the publisher of the online news site Sahara Reports, based in New York City, and has lived in the United States for many years. He ran against President Mumadou Buhari earlier this year in an election he said lacked a level playing field. His party, Africa Action Congress, declared August 5th the start of the Days of Rage, inspired by the recent popular uprising in Sudan that toppled the authoritarian ruler Omar al-Bashir. Uh, the protests uh, went ahead despite his arrest days earlier. Shortly before Shuare was arrested, he tweeted, all that's needed for a revolution is for the oppressed to choose a date they desire for liberty, not subjected to the approval of the oppressor. Uh, hashtag revolution now, hashtag days of rage, hashtag August 5th. This is Amoyle Shuare speaking about revolution now at a rally in Nigeria in July. Are you not tired of this government? Tired. Are you not tired of hunger? Tired. Are you not tired of no unemployment? A coalition of press freedom organizations and human rights groups recently petitioned the United Nations and the African Union, while a group called the African Renaissance Organization sent a petition to the U.S. State Department asking the U.S. government to apply pressure on President Mohamedou Buhari for Shwari's release. For more, we're joined by Amoyle Shwari's wife, uh, Opieme Shwari, and one of his attorneys, Nani Jensen Revendlo, the founding director of the Digital Freedom Fund. She's at Columbia Law School. Opayemi Shwari and Nina Jensen Revenflow, welcome to Democracy Now! It's great to have you with us. Thanks so, for us. you were here when Shwari was arrested in Nigeria. And I have to say, I personally was. know Shwari very well. I traveled with him in Nigeria when we went to cover the U.S. oil companies' involvement in. Uh, the Niger Delta and what they were doing there. Um, uh, he has been deeply involved with human rights and in covering his country of Nigeria, though a green card holder here. So when did you learn um, what happened, and what are you demanding now? Sure. Um, on it was Friday night here, Saturday um, in Nigeria. I got a text from him saying, "I love you." And I'm like, OK, great. Love you, too. <laughs> um, but his cousin started calling me over and over about an hour after that and told me that he'd been um, detained. And for four days or three days, we did not have any contact with him. We didn't know where he was. He was taken by force um, at his hotel and in Lagos and transported to um, Abuja. Um, and the capital, the capital of Nigeria, and of course he 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 didn't eat their food, didn't drink their water for all those days. He was basically in isolation with no food, no water. But then um, on the Tuesday after, he was able to get in touch with his lawyer as well as they allowed people to come in to provide him with food. But since then, he's basically been in isolation for over a month, being held in Abuja with. Um, basically no outlets. He's basically locked in a room, um, for the most part. <laughs> and the formal charges against him are based on? <laughs> there are no formal charges, per se. Um, he's being investigated. So um, the courts uh, gave the Nigerian government or the DSS the ability to hold him for 45 days to investigate. Um, uh, 
treason, possible treason and terrorism. Um, they based it upon a meeting that he had with um, uh, Nam Di Kalu, who is um, who has an organization around Biafra. Uh, he met with him. Yele made it public. Um, in fact, he disagrees with some of Nam Di's rhetoric, um, but he met with him. And Yele's whole thing is bringing in everybody's voices so that Nigeria can be a country for pretty much all of its citizens. So that's one of the things that they mentioned against him. They also mentioned. Um, he may have taken money from international countries, and he met them in Dubai. He has never been to Dubai before, um, which was an interesting um, statement on the Nigerian government's part. And no money, basically, has been found with him. So those are some of the things that they've mentioned um, um, and associated with him. But they basically have no grounds for, for holding him and haven't found um, any evidence. Nene Jensen Reventlow, um, you are part of an international team of attorneys representing Shwari. Um, can you talk about how you got involved and the significance of his case here in the United States as well? Well known for founding Sahara reporters, reading his reports all the time in Nigeria. Well, I met Shwari for the first time when I still worked for the Media Legal Defense Initiative. Uh, we were supporting him in his defense of a number of cases that were brought against Sahara reporters here in the U.S. Uh, for their critical investigative reporting. Um, and I was alerted to his case uh, shortly after uh, his arrest uh, and detention. Uh, and at that time, Shwari has a really good uh, legal team in Nigeria that represents him, uh, led by uh, Mr. Femi Falana. And they're trying very their famous human rights very lawyer. famous human rights lawyer, and they're uh, trying their best to challenge his detention. Uh, so far, unfortunately, that has been unsuccessful. So uh, on behalf of a number of press freedom and human rights organizations, we filed the petition that you just mentioned, uh, calling for the UN and AU special rapporteurs uh, to intervene, basically, because we consider his arrest and detention to be arbitrary and a violation of his right to freedom of expression, freedom of association. And, um, yeah, we want them to take action. Basically. And what's the general situation in Nigeria for journalists or uh, other critics of the government? What, do, what kind of uh, obstacles do they face? Uh, it's generally a very challenging uh, environment uh, where both uh, intimidation and also uh, legal repercussions for critical reporting and generally voicing uh, opposition or uh, challenging the regime um, is, is, is met with, with consequences. So Boris' arrest doesn't uh, stand alone. Uh, there have been uh, numerous arrests, uh, also in the context of the 5 August um, demonstration that actually did take place, where uh, numerous people were arrested, including a number of uh, uh, reporters that work for Sahara Reporters, uh, but various other human rights defenders in the country have been arrested over the past uh, months. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so the Nigerian court justified uh, Shore's detention through the Terrorism Act. Um, if you could expand on that, in a ruling on August 8, the federal high court in Nigeria's capital city, Abuja, uh, uh, permitted the holding of uh, Shwari um, without pressing any charges. And that can be extended. Is that right? This is correct. So the security service um, filed an ex parte request uh, for 90 days of detention under the Terrorism Act to conduct investigations. And an order was issued for 45 days uh, of detention. Uh, this has been challenged, uh, and last week, uh, finally, this came to a, a hearing in court. But unfortunately, the judge that heard the petition from uh, Mr. Falana and his team uh, decided that he basically couldn't rule on the matter and referred the matter back to the original court that issued the order. And if you hear me, I'm wondering if you had an opportunity to talk to your husband uh, at all, and uh, what's his, what, what are his spirits like? What has he told you, if you have? Sure. They've um, allowed him to call twice. Um, so he got to speak to myself and also the, the children. He How is, old are your kids? Um, nine and 12. Um, he's definitely putting up a brave um, front, but it's hard. Um, staying in isolation for that long and having monitor calls with your family limits what he's able to say or how freely he's able to express himself. And his use of the word revolution, for his organization Revolution Now, um, Nani, if you could talk about the significance of this, um, they're saying that this amounts to treason. However, they themselves have used that word, talking about the need for revolution in Nigeria, Nigeria, Africa's most populous country. Yeah. 
Sure, I used the word revolution as an as an emotive uh, term, uh, and he's used this in uh, the context of wanting to um, achieve transformative change uh, throughout his career. Uh, when he founded Sahara Reporters, he said that he wanted to rev revolutionize uh, news reporting by founding an organization that would rely on investigative citizen reporting. Um, interestingly, after uh, his arrest, uh, there was um, a, a large outcry uh, within Nigeria, and many people indeed pointed to the fact that many of the officials that are currently in government have used the word revolution in and the past as well. And has the Trump administration intervened in any way to help Shore? Uh, not that I'm aware. Well, we'll continue to follow Shore's case, and people should read Sahara Reporters. Uh, he is the publisher and founder of that. I want to thank you both for being with us. Um, Abiyeme Shore is the wife of Amoyele Shore, who was arrested August 3rd in Lagos, Nigeria. Nani Jansen Reventhlo is a part of an international team of attorneys representing Shore here. That does it for our broadcast. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Our website is democracynow.org. Thanks so much for joining us.